What's going on guys? Sharpshot here. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. So today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys three simple tips on how to improve fast at looping in DVD. This guy will be mainly for the people who struggle at looping, whether you're a beginner and you're just starting out your DVD journey, or you're an experienced player who avoids looping at all costs because you're scared and you're going to get down immediately. This video will be for you guys, and these tips I'm going to be giving in this video will give you a good foundation for looping and will set you on the right path to becoming a good looping survivor in DVD. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. The first tip to improving at looping is to look behind you during chases. This might seem like a really obvious and basic tip, but glancing behind you momentarily during a chase can give you so much information. The amount of survivors I see just putting on the blinders and just looking straight forward at the pallet or wherever they want to loop to cause them so much time in a chase because quickly looking behind you will give you a few pieces of information. The first piece of information will obviously let you see how much distance you have between you and the killer. And this will help you assess whether you'll be able to make it to that pallet you're running to, whether you'll be able to vault that window, whatever it might be. Looking behind you will set you on the right path to making the best decision during a chase. The other really important piece of information that this will give you is give you information on the killer's mind games and what they're doing during the chase. Killers are always reacting to what the survivor's doing in the chase and they're trying to be one step ahead of those survivors and taking advantage of these mind games will allow you to extend the duration of a chase so much longer than you would have if you had just zeroed in and not looked behind you. A really common example of a mind game you wouldn't have realized if you didn't look behind you is if the killer is really close behind you and you're trying to make it to a pallet and you don't think you'll have time. Oftentimes the survivors will just look straight ahead at the pallet and right when they get to it immediately try and drop it to stun the killer. But in reality the killer knows you're going to do this and instead they just walk right around the loop while you waste time dropping the pallet and then they'll just M1 you right away and you'll have wasted the pallet and gotten no value out of it. But you could have avoided all of this if you had just simply glanced behind you right before getting to the pallet, realizing that killer isn't actually going to try and hit you and they're looping around it. And instead you could save the pallet, loop around it and extend the chase even longer. The second tip I have is to have a path in mind while looping. So before you actually go into a loop, for example, if you're just sitting on a gen, be aware of your surroundings and make an escape plan so that if the killer does come, you're ready and prepared to loop them. This means taking into account where the nearest loop is, where the buildings and windows are. So now, once you do get into a chase, you know exactly where you want to go and you aren't caught off guard at all. And once you are in a chase and you want to transfer to another loop, before doing so, always know where you want to go next. I highly recommend to not aimlessly leave a loop if you don't know where you want to go to next. More often than not, you'll lead yourself to an open area just to get down really quickly. So instead, if you don't know where to go, try and stay inside of the loop you're currently running for as long as possible until you have a good idea of where you want to go next and even if that means taking a hit while staying in that loop it's not the end of the world because you could potentially be extending the chase way longer staying in that loop taking that hit and if you had just started panicking and aimlessly wandering off to the next loop and something really important about your pathing when you're mapping it out in your head of where you want to go always try and make it lead back to either the killer shack or if the map has a really good main building loop back there i would say always try and go back to the killer Killer Shack because if that's your end goal and you've already been looping the killer for a little bit and you end up at Killer Shack, more likely than not, the killer will just give up because looping the Killer Shack is a survivor's dream. And if you want to learn how to loop Killer Shack really well, I actually made a one minute guide on this, which I will link right now. The third and arguably the most important tip to looping is to just be patient. This also might seem like an obvious tip, but when you look at the best loopers in the world, they are super patient in their chases. The most common thing I see with people struggling with looping is that they always think the killer is right behind them and they're always super panicky and whenever they get to a pallet they just drop it immediately this just completely wastes the loop and it makes it so that you'll get down even quicker so if you use this tip in conjunction with the first tip and you look behind you and you're patient you'll realize that you have a lot more time inside of a loop than you originally had thought and this tip works twofold because if you do play a loop smart and you don't have a lot of space between 
between you and the killer. If you're patient, the killer will literally give you more space, believe it or not, for sometimes even just doing nothing. An example of the killer giving you free space is to fake drop a pallet or faking a vault, because oftentimes the killer will predict that you will drop that pallet or you will vault that window, and they'll try and cut you off by doubling back. And if you had just simply stood there and not done anything, they would have given you just free space. Two tips on how to fake a pallet or how to fake a window vault. When faking a pallet drop, if the killer is really close to me and is in M1 range, I usually like to just do no fakes and just run straight through the pallet and hope the killer either misses their M1 or takes a step back, which gives me more space. And if you do have a little bit more space from the killer, doing a 180 as if you're gonna drop the pallet, but then doing a 180 again and just keep running, this can oftentimes make the killer step back from the loop and give you more space. And when fake vaulting, all you wanna do is give the impression to the killer that you're gonna vault the window or the pallet. So walking right up to it and at the last moment just standing there or gliding off of the pallet or vault. And at the end of the day, if you do get hit in these two fake scenarios, it's not the end of the world because now the killer in their head is gonna think, okay, is the survivor faking it or are they gonna actually vault it? And they'll start mind gaming themselves, which will buy you even more time. One last bonus tip that I wanted to quickly add, this doesn't really have anything to do with survivor, but playing killer can actually help you a lot in looping as a survivor. Playing killer and being on the other side of a chase can really help you knowing what to do and what not to do in a chase as a survivor. For example, if a really good survivor is looping you like crazy, try and pay attention to what they're doing and implement it into your looping as a survivor. And if you catch a survivor in a loop really quickly, try and see what their mistake was and not replicate that while you're playing survivor. So yeah, guys, those were the tips on how to improve fast in looping. I hope this video helped you guys out and make sure to comment down below any more tips that you have to help out the beginners. So yeah guys, that's been the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. This has been Sharpshot and I will see you guys in the next video.